we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Once again, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Holy God, we bless your name. Thank you for always being there for us. We appreciate your holy name. Lord, we can't do without you. If you are not with us, we will fade away. Therefore, we invite your presence into this our gathering. Even as we begin the fasting of this year, 2020, a year that you have given to us that we should rejoice and be glad in it. We ask, O oh Lord God, that your presence will energize us. May your spirit abide with us. That this year will be the most fruitful year that we have ever encountered in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, this year, I want us to be very, very serious with our Christian life. And this message uh, is a message that is intended to cause revival among us. And I know that as many that we hear this message... After now, including you, will be blessed in Jesus' name. Personally, I don't know about your spiritual life. I don't know how you have been living. But I know that there is a way that God has designed for us to live as Christians. And if you are not living that way, the things that God has proposed for us, his children, it is very, very doubtful that you will be able to achieve them. I don't know if you are doing well in your Christian life or not, but I know that someone gives us a summary of how a Christian life should look and that we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bears its fruits in season. If it is not like that, then something is wrong. It is either that Christian who is not bearing fruit in its season is facing trial, or that Christian is not living well. These are the two major things that I know. Could be trial, personal, or general one. For instance, trial that is faced by a land as we have it now in Nigeria. Nigeria is facing trial uh, because uh, we did not live well. The righteous also, it is affecting the righteous too. That one is what I mean by general trial. A Christian can also face trial. For instance, Job. Job faced trials and in his season, he was not bearing fruit. Rather, the fruits he already born, they were getting destroyed before his very eyes. They were taken away. Another reason why a Christian may not bear fruit is sin. And today, we want to address the Christian life. The topic of today is seek me and live. Seek me and do what? What is seek? To seek is to find. 
is to look for something diligently, is to consciously go after something, to look for something that is either hidden or that is lost. Something that is lost, something that is out of your sight. You don't know the whereabouts and you want to search for it diligently. So leave these people, God say, was telling, seek me and leave. They were already alive, but they were facing challenges. There were several reasons God said, seek me and leave. Number one, they were already alive, but they were not living well. They were spiritually dead. Spiritually, they were dead. They were not alive in God. Another reason is because calamity was coming upon them. So God was telling them, seek me. As you seek me, you will live long. You will continue to live. I mean your physical life. You will live if you seek me. Another reason is that these people we are living below expectation. The life that we are living was not actually the life that God had created and designed for them. For somebody who God creates to be a billionaire, to be counting thousands of nairas, that person is living beyond God's expectation. God said, I know the plans I have towards you. They are plans of good. They are plans of just good. Not plans of evil, but just plans of good. To give you an expected end. These are the plans of God for us. And not the plans to harm us. Not the plans to do us evil. Anytime man has crisis in his living, in life, it is good that that man goes back to God to ask God, God, what is wrong with my life? Anytime we have crisis in our race, in the race of this life, we're supposed to go back to God and ask God, God, what is the issue? A lot of times, many of us don't want to ask God that question. And we run up and down seeking for solution. But I think that when a machine is bad, it is the manufacturer that's supposed to fix it better than the user. Let's look at our text. Amos chapter 5, verses 4, 5, and 6. Come to Bethel and transgress. Come to Bethel and transgress. At Gilga, multiply transgressions and bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with living and proclaim and publish the offerings for these like at you, O ye children of Israel, say the Lord God. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in your city and want of bread in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, say the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I just read... Amos 4, 4 to 6. Now let us read Amos 5, 4. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor Giga, nor enter into Giga, and pass not to Besheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live. Let it break out like fire 
in the house of Joseph and devour it. And there be none to quench it in Bethel. Praise the Lord. When God was speaking, he knew what he was saying. God said, do not go to Bethel. Do not go to Gilgal. Rather, do what? Seek me. And do what? And leave. For us to understand what God is saying in this place to the children of Israel, I want us to look at what Bethel and Gilgal actually uh, was in those days. Bethel uh, is the place that uh, Jacob, when he was running away from his brother Esau, when he was fleeing from him in Genesis chapter 28, he decided to rest when the night fell on him. And while he was sleeping, putting his head on a stone, he saw, the Lord opened his eyes and he saw in a dream that angels were ascending and descending. And then God spoke to him and promised him. And he anointed the stone on which he laid his head. And he called the name of the place, which was formerly known as Luz. He called it Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. The house of who? The house of who? Bethel means the house of God. So Bethel was not a bad place. But here God is saying, do not go to Bethel. By implication, do not go to the house of the Lord. Don't go to that building, that church building. Do not go to Bethel. If you want to extend it, it means don't go to that place. Literally, don't go to that house of God. Don't go there. Why? Because these people, we are not going to that Bethel to do good. Though they were uh, religious activities, as we read in um, chapter 4, these people used to go there, offer sacrifices, bring their offerings every morning, and they paid their tithes every three years. Amos chapter 4, verse 4. They paid their tithes. Verse 5. They offer sacrifice of thanksgiving with living. These people were doing this thing the way God said, but they were not with God. They were giving their normal offering that God said they should give. But these people were far from God. And they thought that in doing this, they will be saved. But here God said, Seek me. It is me you should seek. I am not interested in these sacrifices. But seek me and live. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Meanwhile, the kind of burnt offering, thanksgiving, a sacrifice of thanksgiving that we are given was with living. Um... The bread that's supposed to be offered, supposed to be an unliving bread. Eh? Unliving. When we say unliving bread, unliving bread means the bread that has no yeast. Remember what Jesus Christ said, that beware of the living of the Pharisees. He was not talking about bread, but he was talking about adulteration. He was talking about Practices that are not of his own. He was talking about hypocrisy. These people were doing this thing with hypocrisy. They were doing this thing in the name of I am doing my, I am rendering services to God. Meanwhile, their hearts were not with God. And God was very displeased with them. Today we are talking about seek me and leave. 
seek me and live. There were up to like more than one Gilga in the Bible. And the word Gilga likely means circle of stones. And Gilga is a place that the early Israelites, before the worship of Israel, uh, their worship was centralized. I mean, before they had a, a, a particular place like the temple where they worship God. Gilgal used to be a place where they go to, uh, they gather for religious ceremonies. Not the Israelites have many religious ceremonies. So, Gilgal used to be a place they used to go for these ceremonies. And it likely means circle of stones. That means Stones where people can sit and gather and celebrate. But God said, don't go to where? Don't go to Bethel. Don't go to Gilga. Settle your case first. Before you go to these places, settle your case with me first. In another sense, Bethel, they erected some idols in Bethel. And God was angry. The place people were supposed to go to worship God. They put idols there. The place that was supposed to be the house of God. Became a place where people were practicing evil. And God was angry with them. Why do I choose to preach this message today? We need to correct a lot of things. And if all of us keep quiet, so many things will go wrong. And if God does not save us, if God does not help us, if there will be another generation, that generation will not receive Christianity. They will receive Laodicean Christianity. In Luke 1 1. The average Christian today believes that. God can only bless them when they sow seeds. The average Christian today believes that God can only hear them when they scream at the top of their voice. The average Christian today believes that for God to hear them, to answer their prayers, they need to meet one powerful man of God who will prophesy over their lives. Without that, they will not prosper in life. But imagine God speaking here. That don't go to Bethel. Bethel, the house of God. A place called the house of God. Don't go there. Seek me. Rather do what? Seek who? Seek me. Let me tell you something. There are people that God has cursed. There are people that are, that are carrying curses upon their heads. That God himself has pronounced condemnation upon. And they are moving from one house of God to the other. From one prophet of God to the other. Receiving prayers, collecting prophecies. Saying, Amen. I receive, I receive. Listen, it will not work. That is the truth. I remember a lady, a young girl that woke up to me some years ago. I was in the office and she came and she told me that a woman is after her. That the date of her death had been called that she will not cross that year. And I think it was already December. And as she was talking to me, instead of God to speak to me about what she was passing through, about death, I saw her in a very dry place. And God said, this lady landed here the very day she started having homosexual relationship. And I told her, God said, you are a lesbian. And this was the beginning of your problems. She was running from one man of God to the other. You know, uh, 
She was told that she would die. And a woman told her, you are going to die by so, so, so time, you must die. She was running from one church to the other, looking for life. Meanwhile, her problem was not with the enemy, but with the maker. God wanted her to reconcile. Reconcile with me. Stop running up and down. In course of running from one place to the other, some people even run into from fry pan to where? To fire. Today we have a lot of falsehood, a lot of lies. So much lies. Sometimes you see some people with their look of a prostitute crying sincerely and very long eyelash. They will be crying from the from the whole of their with the whole of their hearts. Crying. And when you see them, you know that these people don't know God at all. They have no relationship. See, you can't judge people by their appearance. But the appearance has a lot to do with what is inside. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And a man does nothing except what he has proposed in his heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It is what is in the heart that we play out in form of action, in form of dressing, in form of words, in form of movement, in form of thoughts. It is what is in the heart that plays out. So many of us have been sincerely deceived. Like some people who are fighting for Lucifer now. There are satanists who believe sincerely with their heart that they are fighting for the truth. What is the truth? The truth in quotes. They believe that the kingdom actually belonged to Lucifer originally. And God took it from him by trick and by force. So they are fighting for the devil to reclaim the kingdom. That is what Satan told them. I've listened to a lot of Satanists who repented. In fact, um, this one, uh, Professor Nathan Uzoma, the living former occult grandmaster now in Christ. Listen to his interview. I've read some of his books. These people were sincerely deceived. You know, like Paul, who was sincerely deceived. He believed that he was actually rendering services to God when he was killing Christians. He thought he was protecting the name of God. He thought he was protecting the worship of God. He never knew that he was fighting against God. He thought that, that by killing Christians, he would silence the heretics. But he never knew that he was fighting against God and Jesus himself. Praise the Lord. So many people have been sincerely deceived. They believe that they are worshipping God. They believe that they are doing the right thing. But they are so far away from the truth. And it is only the truth. That can set us free as Christians. I have been in ministry for so many years now. And I have been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you have my years. I have preached more than half of my years. Because I received Christ when I was still in primary school. And I started preaching. And from personal experience. Attending to people. Sometimes a lot will show you people's problems. I say, this is this person's problem. Tell them to live like this. They will get their breakthrough. But because they like that lifestyle, they don't. They don't. They will never. Okay, let me give you an example. I've told this story before. There was a man who was working in a company. He used to smoke cigarettes. 
there was a woman I'm very close to. And God revealed to this woman in a dream that she should tell this man, the woman is a prayer partner, my prayer partner. This was, I was in secondary school. And then God said, tell this man to stop smoking. The company will give him a car. And she went and told this man that the enemy, the enemies, your enemies have used the smoke of the cigarette you smoke. They don't go into the air. They don't go into the atmosphere. They circle around you. So anytime your company looks at you, anytime they see you, they remember you, it is the smoke of the cigarette they see. So they can't give you a car. God said if you stop smoking, they will give you a car. And this man became serious. Stop smoking. He was not even a serious Christian. I don't think that man was going to church. But I know he was not an idol worshiper. Maybe he was this Sunday, Sunday Christian. As he stopped smoking, they gave him a car. It is something I witnessed. They gave him a black car. Official car. Another time, God revealed to the same woman that this man has started smoking again. They will soon take the car from him. She went to him and told him in form of warning. He did not listen. He was hiding to smoke. And they took the car from him. The car did not stay with him. I don't think it was up to a year. They took it from him. The same work he was doing. He was still in the same office. They took the official car from him. I don't think that they have given him a car today. We are our own problem. That is the truth. I don't want to tell you that... Uh, if you sow seed into my life and I release declarations upon your life, your life will not become good. No. There is, the Bible says that if God, God loves a cheerful giver. Even if a pagan gives, he will be blessed. It is a universal law. Anybody that gives is blessed. Especially when you give to the right person at the right time. Like seeing a hungry man on the street and you give him food to eat. Why won't you be blessed? You must be blessed. If you give to the work of God, you must be blessed. In fact, you will be blessed the most. So, it is universal. I don't want to tell you that it is only when I release declarations upon your life. That your life will be good. I'm not saying it does not work. It works. But there are other things that are attached. There are other things that are attached. Do you remember that? Somebody like Cain. No man of God can prophesy to Cain. And his life will become good. Is somebody following me? Do you know Cain? The brother of Abel. That killed Abel. That God released curses upon his head. You, in fact, if you have real anointing from God, you dare not even pray. Because even Balaam himself, Balaam said that I cannot cause the one God has blessed. So also, the one that God has caused, no true man of God can bless that one. Even if he opens his mouth, it will not work. It will not. It will not work. That is the truth. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Psalm 1 makes it very, very clear. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, not seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the law, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also 
shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth, shall do what? Whatsoever he doeth, shall do what? Shall prosper. It will prosper. The ungodly are not so. Those who are ungodly, even if they belong to a church, it is not so with them. So nobody should deceive us. We have a lot of people who do not know any Bible verse. They know no Bible verse, but they know hundreds of quotations from their pastors. They can quote that the Gio said, Papa says, hey, Pastor said, but they cannot say it is written. They have no relationship with God. They are not seeking God. They are not seeking God. And because their relationship is with the man of God and not the God of the man. Anytime there is something they need to do for God. If the man of God is not there, they will not do it. Or even if they do it, they will not do it well. If they give money and their name is not announced, there will be a problem in the church that day. Because they want the man of God to hear the amount they are giving. Seek God and live. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know the person I'm talking to. There are times that you lock yourself in, in door, and you seek the face of God. You ray your life and ask yourself, how am I living my life? Why is nothing working for me? Instead of running up and down. There are some of us, we go to places, they tell us the names of our four forefathers. They tell us. But the same person can never tell us that there is an idol from the village by the side of our bed. One of the ways you know that the person you are meeting for prayers is not from God is when they give you only good prophecies. When they don't tell you the truth. Do you know that there are some men eh, in their wallet, they put uh, protection, what they normally call condom. Eh? They put it inside. Anywhere they are going, if they are going to church, it's inside. Because of the kind of lives they are living. But do you know that the same wallet, they put money inside too. And the eyes of the prophet will see the money. And tell you that there is somebody here. You have 100,000 naira in your wallet. And tell you the denomination. But his eyes will not see that wicked thing inside the same wallet. And after give, you say the Lord is here after giving that money. He releases blessings upon you. You are deceiving yourself. It will not work. That is the truth. There are evil powers too. There are people who are initiating people today. You get initiated. They release those decrees. And you get some blessings. But they will take something from you. Because nothing that the devil gives is free. If he gives you anything, he will collect one. Or collect hundred from you. Sometimes after dressing up for church, sometimes when we are processing for Holy Communion, let us look ourselves. Let us look inward and ask ourselves if the white we are putting on actually fits us. If, when, if God looks down from heaven, whether he will see us wearing white, the truth is that Christianity is not easy. It is not easy. The book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, 
Jesus was telling the churches, to him that overcomes. It is not about sleep. To him that fights and overcome, will I do this for? Will inherit all things. Shall have access to the tree of life. To him, it is to him that overcomes. God told the Israelites, don't go to Bethel. Some of us today, we, we always go to church. Every day of the week, we have one activity or the other. But very far from God. It is good to always be in the presence of God. It is good. But if that physical presence does not create a spiritual presence of God in our lives, it is useless. Do you know that some people come to church? <laughs> If you see what some people come to church to do, you will believe them. God, they see plenty of you. <laughs> some people come to church to steal. To steal. Every time they are in church, how many people have been caught in this church stealing? Even this altar, you see the way people drop money there. Some people come to this church and pretend to be praying and they pick money. We men of God, we may not know why some people are coming to church. We think they are religious people. We think they are devoted people. Meanwhile, they have interior motives. Some come to church to socialize. To show people how beautiful and sexy they are. Maybe in their streets, nobody is seeing them again. They have useless themselves. They have used all the men or women in the streets. So they need a new environment. Where they will cash new mumu. <laughs> when we were, when we were in uh, Adamic Budu Christian Center, there was this lady who used to come to our chapel to worship. No, only men are there. Eh? Only men are there. You know, we place their training ministers of God. So some people used to come from the town to come and worship. There was this girl, lady, who used to come. Each time she is dancing, she would dance in a way that people would notice her. And I told myself, this one is a trap. -o. This one is a trap. Do you know that the trap actually caught somebody? The trap caught someone. <laughs> Our motive of going to that place to worship was different. That seat there, one, two, three, counting from the other side, towards the side. A lady sat there with her iPhone 8 Plus. He stole it. A young man brought one stupid Nokia phone that has no battery. It's on my table now. No SIM card, no battery. The cover is broken, it's torn. Small Nokia phone. Stupid phone. Brought it. Held it in his hand. As we are there, 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 the lady went to give offering. The young man took the phone, ran away. When they say shout fire, shout it louder. Let your own be louder than your neighbor's own. That's one. We still shout. There was a woman who is, that woman should be, over 80 years. Yes, that woman is over 80 years. She came to this church. And there was uh, someone who pretended to be sick. Sitting close to her. Stole the phone of this woman. And this woman was crying. She came to me. She was crying. I couldn't look at her eyes. It touched me. I asked her what kind of phone. So I took her. Should I begin to tell her that, Mama, don't worry, God will bless you. I took her to MTN office, retrieved her line, and bought her a new phone. Because I couldn't tell her, Mama, sorry. That same one, when that person starts facing problems tomorrow, they will be running to prophets, Abby. They will be running to prophets. Have you not seen all these videos where they throw children in toilets? Hey, maybe, you, have you seen any video like that? Anybody seen any video like that? Where they throw children in the toilet or throw them? Uh, on the, there is, 
there are pictures I have. People were doing sanitation. All these uh, people who do clean up, they were doing sanitation. And in a dustbin, they saw twins, twins, babies. A lady or a woman aborted and threw them in a dustbin. <laughs> threw them in a dustbin. Tomorrow, would they look for prayers? If they are Christians. Eh? They will run for solution. They will be calling somebody witch. They will be calling somebody wizard. Me, I've stopped wasting my time for those kind of people. When I meet with people and I know that they are their own problem, I don't waste my time for them. If I tell them, repent, change. If they don't want to change, I give them chance. I don't waste my time. Sometimes after praying, praying, praying for months with people, when God opens your eyes to see those you are praying with, you will regret for all the prayers you have prayed. Some people are their own problem. One day they brought a man to Jesus. He was sick, paralyzed. He couldn't walk. He was too weak to walk. He couldn't stand on his own. So when they learned that Jesus was in a room, they climbed the roof, opened up the roof, and let the man down. When Jesus saw the man, he pronounced forgiveness of sin. Instead of telling the man, your enemies will die. I cast the demon of sickness out of your body. Instead of releasing healing straight, Jesus knew that that man had a problem with his maker. He knew that it was that man that opened the door for the enemy to come in. Do you think that it was Delilah who killed Samson? It was not Delilah. It was not the Philistine that killed Samson. It was not a stone that fell from the building that killed Samson. It was Samson that killed himself. It was Samson. Who opened the door? How can a woman be asking you? Why is it that when we want to kill you, we can't kill you? Each time we want to kill you, we can't kill you. Tell me where your power is. And you still want to discuss with that kind of woman? Eh? You want to discuss? Somebody is coming to you that, eh, mommy, do you know that uh, when I saw three million naira in your account, uh, I took your ATM to, to, to the ATM machine and I tried one number. It did not work. Mommy, can you tell me your ATM number? Eh? And you will not say, uh, it is zero, zero, two, two. You will go and try it. Which are three million naira. And you know that that's your child. Each time that child sees money, that child will not come home until the money is finished. Eh? You will not say there, oh, sorry. He said, but I tried it. It did not work. Mommy, why are you lying to me? I said, okay, 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 don't worry. That money, eh, we want to use it to live our lives, so, but uh, let me just try it again. Uh, go and try CCC, two, four places. Somebody is playing with your life. I told one young girl recently. Are you in a relationship? She said yes. For how long now? She said, is it six years or five years? And I asked her, how old, how grown up does a five-year-old boy or baby supposed to be? She said, uh, can be up to like this now. I said, okay. So all this why are men not coming for your hand in marriage? She said, yes, they come. What do you tell them? I tell them that I am with someone. I say, you are the wish that is killing yourself. Even this week, I told one. I said, do you know that small time now your breasts will fall? The muscles will slack and they will fall. It's nature. It is nature. Today now men will see you. They say, hey, this one, this one, very hot. Tomorrow you will be cold. Any old mama you see with waist bent towards one side was once a young girl like you before. That is the truth. 
Any old man you see that can't even walk well. You know some men today, they have two legs. They have walking stick. But it's not, they, this three are not enough for them to walk. Their wives or children or so on will still hold them. Eh? They were once young, some years ago. They used to jump around. Life is useless, so life is in vain. If you are old, if you are really old, when people see you, they ask you, Mama, how are you? Papa, how are you? How is your head? Whether they know you are sick or not, they ask you, how is your head? Am I lying? Do we have old people in this place? They ask you, how is your head? Whether you are sick or not. Because they know that old age is tied to some sicknesses. Naturally, it's not a cause. Naturally. So when somebody is giving you a ring and he's telling you this ring is between me and you, if you leave me, I will die. Let that person go and die. Because the same person will waste your life, waste your years, when they know, they are, do you know that? The, the mama, eh? <laughs> the mother of the boy you are dating, will be the one to call you, our wife, our wife, our wife, our wife. That same one, after 10 years, will not be telling the son, this girl, are you sure this girl will produce children if you pay her a bright price? This girl, you know you people, we are playing, so play, we are batting your children, we are batting your children. Are you sure this one can give birth again? The same mama who used to call you our wife. The same mama will be saying, not this one again. Go and look for a younger one to marry. And somebody will be saying, I will die after we see my ears. The man did not waste your years. He is just a gambler. Unfortunately, you are the card he used in whiling away his time. That's the truth. Samson played with his life. He was playing with his destiny. And he was watching it. Playing with his own life. But do you know that by the time his hair started growing back, which means reconciliation with his maker, his strength started returning back to him. His strength, the spirit of God that left him started returning back to him. Nobody should deceive us. No human being should do what? Should deceive us. It is God we need to seek. If anybody tells you, if you leave this church, you will die. It is a lie. That person is not God. I am not saying that God cannot put your protection in a particular congregation. That is not what I am saying. But there are ministers of God who will say, it is only this ministry that God knows all over the world. If you are not in this one, you cannot enter heaven. If you don't have our sticker, you will have accident and that is a lie. You will not die. Reconcile with God. Those who lead men to themselves, don't lead men to Christ. Some people are just there to lead men to themselves. They tell you big stories of how God has used them. Sometimes they could even be with you and you see them in your dreams. Some other times too, they could manipulate small spirits and they begin to talk. Hey, you are a man of God. Fire is burning in you. Some of those, majority of those ones, they are just manipulations. Deception. You could see them casting out spirits and demons. Satan's could just be honorary deception. Some of those people even are paid to do so. And you think that is the only place where there is God. It's a lie. I want to encourage every believer today, this year 2020, seek God. Seek him. With the whole of your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart. You will 
find him. If you seek him with the whole of your heart, he will be found by you. If you pray, he's not answering you. Go into fasting. Stop yourself from food. Switch off your phone. Log out of social media and seek the face of God. How many of us are serious with God? Today, who not get picking one die? Who never marry one die? Who not get job one die? Oh? Do you know that uh, I was discussing with a sister in US and she was telling me in her life she never wanted to have children. <laughs> Not because she has a sickness. Not because she did not marry. Not because there was no money. She said in her life, she said, I don't want to have children. I want to adopt. You know, she said there are too many children who have no parents, who have no care on the street that she wanted to adopt. So I told her, I said, hmm, if you try that in Africa here, if you try that here, <laughs> If you try that in this place, <laughs> we have missed the meaning of life. You could see people who are happily married when they stay one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, no children. That house will become hell on earth. Because there will be no joy in the family. Hardly you see couples who are looking for children that are happy today. To them, God has forgotten them. How do you see somebody who has no job? When you ask somebody, how are you? How is your day? I beg, I lamb, they roast me. The average Nigerian complains when exchanging pleasantries. They complain when they greet. Even in Soko, where I come from, how this side, they will tell you a hunger. He said, We find no Benaole hunger. Even when they are eating, they will tell you a hunger. Even if it is at night, night time, the time they don't supposed to eat, if you greet a Soko person, how this side, I hope you people are fine, they will tell you, We are fine, but only hunger. Even when they are eating, they are complaining of hunger. It's my tribe. But me, I don't say that. There is nobody in this place, you called me and I said, things are rough. Have I ever used that language any day? It is a rough or grand, no level. Me, I will tell you, I am fine. Because I know God is on the throne. If I saw people are close to me, when they ask me, how are you? I will say, I'm always fine. And they will laugh. <laughs> I'm always fine. Happiness, joy, is a choice. Today, some of us, we measure the size of God according to what he has released. According to the blessings he has released to us. So, if God has not given us children, God is a small God. And whenever we want to pray, instead of thanking him for the life we have, we begin, we start, we complain. God, I've been serving you for 20 years now, no child. God, where are you? And do you know that when some of these people who do this Amasati ministry, when they will need money from you, they will magnify your problem. They will make your problem to look very big. I tell you that an enemy is responsible. That for them to kill the enemy for you, for them to prophesy to you, you need to give money. And you run and give money. Don't worry. I'm not saying it does not work. Your faith can work for you. But that is not the right thing. Forget about these problems. Your problems should not give you insights to the definition of who God is. Rather, if you have challenges, your challenges should draw you closer to God. You can use your faith and your faith will work for you. Even when somebody lies to you that God said you should do this and he will bless you, 
Sometimes it may not work. You may not get results. Sometimes your faith could work for you. Have you not read that the first time God wanted Moses to bring water out of the rock, God said, strike the rock with what? With your rod. The second time he said, speak to it. But Moses struck it. He did not obey God well. Eh? But water still come out. Water came out. God honored himself. The faith the people had on Moses, people so much believed in Moses that water will come out. But because Moses disobeyed God, it cost him entering the land of Israel. But God honored his name by causing water to come out. So sometimes, you could be lied to and you do the thing. And God will look at the faith you have in him. And you could receive what you actually believed. But it may be that it is out of mercy. And not because it was a directive from God through the man of God. Is somebody following me? Let us seek God this year. Let us be serious, sincerely seeking God day and night, early morning. Let us open our Bibles and seek God. In the night, let us seek Him. The more you seek Him, the easier life becomes. Some of us, let me tell you what we do. When we buy fresh fish or fresh meat, bring it into our house and refuse to prepare it, cook it, boil it, or dry it, smoke it. Flies will come, isn't it? Flies will trace the odor, especially when it's getting rotten. They will come. Some of us are fighting enemies. Fighting enemies. Me, I sleep under mosquito nets. Eh? I sleep under mosquito nets. I know that for me to keep mosquitoes away from my house, I have to make sure my windows are locked. I have to make sure my doors are well shut. I don't need to open my windows, open my doors in the night, and be badly with mosquitoes in the house. I know that for mosquitoes, if at all anyone has escaped into my room, I sneak into my net. I make sure that there is no mosquito inside the net. I am protected. It doesn't matter. I have been to bush, forest, and slept there nights. In those forests, there are mosquitoes there, but we go there with mosquito nets. If you are sleeping in the night and you move your body to touch the nets, maybe you are very tired, mosquitoes will finish that part of your body. That is touching the net. They can't enter the net. Inside the mosquito net. But because you have used your body to touch the net. You have given them access. And you could see tens of mosquitoes. Perching. Maybe on your hand. And sucking blood. In this world there are Demons. If your doors are open, they will come in. In this world, there are enemies. If you live the life of sin, Satan will come in. Jesus Christ said, the prince of this world, Satan is coming, but he has nothing in me. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.